Hi. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Miati 12 volt 36 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now this came fresh from Amazon, wrapped in a small box with a lot of bubble wrap. So not much as far as shipping, uh, but let's see if the battery is worthwhile. Today we're going to do a couple of tests of the battery. We're going to do a capacity test to make sure we're getting that full 36 amp hour value that the battery is suggesting that we should get. We're also going to do an output test to make sure that we can get at least one C out, which would be 460, maybe even higher wattage. Now, in this channel, we're going to do non-destructive battery testing, meaning I'm not going to cut into the battery, I'm not going to do anything that's going to be an irreversible harm, because I believe that these batteries are still useful, even if they have some flaws, and I'd like to see what kind of projects we can put together that highlight the strengths of these batteries rather than focusing on the negatives. So first, let's go ahead and hook this up to an inverter and see if we can pull full capacity. So I've got a Bestec 500 watt inverter, pure sine wave inverter, that will hook up to the uh, post on this battery. And then to make sure that we're doing a proper output test, we'll use a nice wattage meter. And finally, for our load, we're going to use a cotton candy machine, because why not? <laughs> As soon as we touch this, we're going to hit charge the capacitors, so we'll go ahead and let it spark, and then we'll put the post down. Good to go. We'll plug in our watt meter. plug in our cotton candy machine. So the cotton candy machine uses 450 watts to charge the heating element and another 25 watts to spin the motor. So once we have our initial surge, we should see about 475 watts reading on the watt meter. cotton candy maker. And so we can see that we're hitting and bring this in a little closer. Four hundred and seventy two watts. So we can definitely pull our full load or 1C capacity from this battery. Now I'm going to let it run for a little bit just to make sure that it doesn't shut off the internal BMS quickly, you know, let it run two or three minutes and then we'll speed through this footage. So we're holding strong. We were able to pull 1C out of this battery very easily, and that's not taking into account the difference in inverter efficiency, meaning we're pulling more than the wattage shown here out of the battery because we're going through the inverter and we're losing about 15%. Now, let's disconnect these leads and do a full capacity test. First, though, we'll charge it up. Alrighty, so let's get started with our capacity test. First thing we're going to do is check our voltage. Just 
make sure that we're fully charged. So we're sitting right around 13.47, which is a good voltage for this chemistry battery. So we're going to connect our leads on our capacity tester. So we've got two leads going positive. All right, now we can see our voltage being displayed here in our current, or here in our discharge, our capacity tester. Um, so we'll just set this up for a constant current. And we want to do this char discharge test at 0.2C. So we'll just set up, and then we can move along. So this is a 36 amp hour battery. So to hit our 0.2C, we're going to do 7.2 which is one-fifth the rated capacity, or rated current capacity amp hours of this battery, and we'll just hit start. And then this is going to convert all of that electrical energy, all that wattage, into heat, which is dispersed by this heat sink and this light, and we'll get our capacity test at the end. So we're about halfway through the discharge test at 18 amp hours. Halfway through that 36, and about two and a half hours spent. Let me try and zoom in on that. So uh, we're looking pretty good so far. Let's just take another look at our process, our progress here. Up to 26 amp hours, pretty good. And holding a steady 12.5 volts, not too bad at all. Expect another hour and 20 minutes or so, and then we'll see how much of uh, capacity we have. Alrighty, we're getting close to that end time. We're at 32 amp hours. We've dropped down to 11.9 volts. So the standard cutoff for these batteries is going to be 10 volts. That's where their low current dis or low voltage disconnect is. So we probably won't even need to hit that based on our current look and the amount of current that we're pulling. So it's actually very exciting. I think we might hit full capacity with this battery. And it looks like we've cut out a bit early with 34 amp hours, four minutes, or four hours and 45 minutes. So we'll do a final check with our multimeter. And we've got no voltage coming out. Take off the hold. And nothing. So that's it. That's our capacity. So we're going to be checking the over voltage disconnect. So I've got it hooked up to my tech power. This is a 0 to 60 volt, 0 to 10 amp DC power supply. So I'm just going to increase our current and push the voltage to that disconnect range. So we'll do it with a nice steady current. and it's dropping current, so we've actually triggered the over voltage disconnect at 15 volts, which is perfect. We're down to zero amps. So let's talk about our conclusions for this video. First, the capacity test. We pulled about 94% capacity out of the battery, 34 amp hours instead of the 36 we expected. Now, considering we bought this battery for $100 off of Amazon, that gives us 4.3 watt hours per dollar spent. Now, if you compare this to something like a Battleborn battery, you're getting 1.3 watt hours per dollar spent. 
So that means we're about three times as efficient, even taking into account the reduced capacity that we're getting out of the Miati battery. In our other tests, the Miati performed admirably. It was able to pull 1C and hold that discharge rate without any difficulty. We could also see both the low voltage disconnect from the capacity test and the over disconnect um, when we did the over voltage disconnect testing. Now there's one thing to make clear. This battery does not have a low temperature disconnect and I couldn't find a high temperature disconnect either. That means you want to use the battery within the stated parameters, but you can't count on the internal BMS to shut it off for you. That said, because of the amazing price that you can get this battery, certainly the cheapest lithium iron phosphate that you can find on Amazon, I think this is something that I would still recommend for users who are building small scale systems and who really want to get started with DIY solar projects. You can find a link to the 36 amp hour Miati lithium iron phosphate battery below.